Over the last episodes, we've seen how to go from notebook code to a deployed model in the cloud. But in reality, an ML workflow is rarely that linear. A huge part of the machine learning process is experimentation and tuning. You'll probably need to try out different hyperparameters, different architectures, or even different hardware configurations before you figure out what works best for your use case. So today, we'll cover a few Vertex AI features that can help you with tuning and scaling your ML models. Specifically, we'll look at hyperparameter tuning, distributed training, and experiment tracking. I'm Nikita, and this is Prototype to Production. Let's get to it. Let's start with hyperparameter tuning, which is the process of discovering the optimal hyperparameters for your model and use case. If you're only trying to tune a handful of hyperparameters, you might be able to run experiments manually. But when you start juggling hyperparameters for your model's architecture, the optimizer, finding the best batch size and learning rate, automating these experiments at scale quickly becomes a necessity. And it's not just about tracking the results from all of these trials. You also want a way to efficiently search the space of possible values so you don't waste as much time trying out combinations that yield low accuracy scores. Vertex AI training, which we used in a previous episode, includes a hyperparameter tuning service. A Vertex AI hyperparameter tuning job will run multiple trials of your training code. On each trial, it will use different values for your chosen hyperparameters set within limits that you specify. To run a hyperparameter tuning job, you'll need to make two changes to your code. First, you'll need to define a command line argument in your main training module for each hyperparameter you want to tune. You'll need to use the value passed in those arguments to set the corresponding hyperparameter in your application's code. So for example, your optimizer might look something like this. You'll also need to report the metric you want to optimize, such as accuracy, to Vertex AI using the CloudML Hypertune Python package. The metric is important because we don't just want to run multiple trials of our code, we also want a way to track which one performed the best. When you configure the tuning job, either through the UI or the SDK, you'll specify the type, the scale, and values for each hyperparameter, as well as the metric you want to optimize. By default, Vertex AI Training will use Bayesian optimization to search the space of possible hyperparameter values. This means that information from prior experiments is used to select the next set of values, making the search more efficient. When the tuning job is done, you'll see the results of each trial in the UI, and you can select the values that maximized your given metric. Full details on how to try this out with our flower example are in the code lab linked below. Training a model once takes long enough, so having to run multiple trials of your training code, each with different values, can be very time consuming. And the longer each training trial takes, the slower your progress will be. So next, we'll look at distributed training, which is an approach to help you train faster. And faster training makes for faster iteration to reach your modeling goals. Distributed training is when you train a machine learning model using multiple accelerators, like GPUs or TPUs on a single machine, or when you train across multiple machines that each might have multiple accelerators. You'll need to make sure that the framework you're using to build your model supports distributed training. For example, both TensorFlow and PyTorch include distributed training modules. Once you've updated your training code, the main concept you'll need to understand from the Vertex AI side is worker pools. Vertex AI provides four worker pools to cover the different types of machine tasks for distributed training jobs. You can think of a worker as a single machine, and each worker pool as a collection of machines performing similar tasks. Worker pool zero configures the primary worker, also known as the chief or scheduler. There's only ever one primary worker, so your worker count for worker pool zero will always be one. The most basic setup for training on Vertex AI would be configuring this worker pool with one machine. That's exactly what we did when we trained our model in an earlier video. To speed up training, we could add one GPU. And to speed up training even more, we could use distributed training by adding multiple GPUs. Again, note that distributed training does require making changes to your code first. 
For example, TensorFlow can make use of one GPU automatically with no code changes required. However, if you want to train with two or more GPUs, then you'll have to do a bit of extra work because TensorFlow needs to know how to coordinate the training process across the multiple GPUs in your runtime. Now, if you wanted to take your distributed training to the next level and use more than one machine, that's when you'll need to configure additional worker pools. Worker pool one is where you can add additional workers to your cluster. Worker pool two is where you can add parameter servers or reduction server reducers. Worker pool three is where you can add any optional evaluators. How you configure these different pools and the combination of workers, reducers, evaluators, etc., will depend entirely on the ML framework and distribution strategy that you're using in your training code. A sample is linked below if you want to try out distributed training for the Flower example on a single machine or on multiple machines. Finally, to track and manage all of your experiments, you can use the Vertex AI Experiment Tracking Service and Vertex AI Manage TensorBoard. TensorBoard is an open source project for machine learning experiment visualization. It includes features like visualizing metrics over time, viewing histograms of weights and biases or other tensors, projecting embeddings to a lower dimensional space, and much more. In addition to the open source features, Vertex AI TensorBoard provides a persistent, shareable link to your experiments dashboard, a searchable list of all experiments in a project, and enterprise-grade security, privacy, and compliance. The simplest way to use Vertex AI TensorBoard in TensorFlow code is by adding the Keras TensorBoard callback to your training loop. You'll write your TensorBoard logs to a cloud storage bucket that Vertex AI Training will automatically make available via a predefined environment variable called AIP TensorBoard Log Dir, as shown here. For even more flexibility, Vertex AI has an experiment tracking service. You can track parameters and metrics of models trained locally in your notebook and see the results in the experiment dashboard. You can create and view an experiment lineage to understand the factors that contributed to your experiment and track and compare pipeline runs. To try this SDK out for yourself, check out the resources below. You now know all the basics of getting models out of experimentation and into production with Vertex AI. But just like how experimentation is iterative, so is the deployment process. Your work doesn't stop when you get a model hosted on the cloud. Vertex AI also includes additional tools we didn't cover in the series that can help you to build repeatable, reusable serving pipelines, monitor the quality of models over time, and much more. If there's a topic you'd like to learn more about, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and be sure to check out all of the code labs. It's time for you to run some experiments of your own.